looking away. You can hurry up and wait. We a real big family. Can you relate? AC on the drums, mate. Dig is out of crate, mate. Bless the mic and make tunes all day. Words from the artist. Peep the combo. All my friends is cold as Fargo. No matter if you black, white, brown, or caramel. Talented and gifted. Modern marvels. This is for the rock stars. Hip hop, boom bap, emo, screw jab, indie, blue kids. What you working on? What have you done? Tell us your story in three, two. Yo, what's going on? It's your boy AC, and I have to share this so people can watch this. Hopefully. So, good morning to you all. We are the Hurry Up and Wait podcast. I'm AC, that drummer. I'm joined by our producer slash. I, I don't. I lost all the slashes and backslashes and things. It's all good. What's up, y'all? What's up? How y'all doing? And my co-host, who goes to more shows than most. Hopefully, we can live up to that standard here and, uh, you know. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. There you go. TJ, what's good? Hardest working man in show business? Straight up, man. Yeah. I got a couple shows actually coming up actually soon. Oh, who are you going to see? Roman Duddy are playing April 29th here in a couple weeks. Where at? Gas, uh, Gas Monkey. Oh, that's right. They are opening back up. Yeah. Well, they've already opened back up. And then Badfish is playing at House and Blues. So House and Blues is starting to get people. They just posted the other day about... Want to get uh, local live acts uh, in the front in the front room to start playing them again? Oh nice. yeah! It's, it's everything starting to move. Everything's starting to move. Yeah, holla at me. Shoot, shoot me that link. I think Red Hot Chili Peppers tribute band is playing at Trees soon. So all all the venues are starting to come back for sure. Yeah, people are getting out there, getting those vaccines. Yeah, I mean, I think that makes all the owners feel a bit better, is that they're knowing that people are out there getting the vaccines. I got my first dose. Nice. I'm I got my first. I got my second one coming up. No, which I'm going to wait a couple more weeks, but I'm there. I got Moderna. Moderna. I got the five, Pfizer. Pfizer. Nice. Yeah. nice. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. 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 I found out uh, one, of, one of the girls who drummed with the, the, uh, the Spurs, Spurs games, like she got the, uh, the Johnson & Johnson. Yeah. 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 See, I'm not sure about that one. No, no, yeah, that's a, that's a no-go. But I was like, yeah. now that I, like, know what I know now, I was like, oh, shit. It's the, it's the one, one and done, done now. Yeah. 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 yeah, but, man, it's also... It's, it's, causing, it's also like, a clot. Yeah. 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 It's, all, it's causing problems. Right. They didn't do enough research on that one. Not that the other two have had a lot of research either, but... Okay. You know, I know there's people out there who don't really want to, like, get it and will talk shit to you about it without getting it. Get that I really did it because of three reasons. One, obviously live music and live sporting events. I want to get back to those. Right. I want to get back to going to big festivals, and I know right. that's going to be a thing. But more than more than anything, my grandfather um, is getting up there in age, and he won't he won't allow anybody in the family to see him if you don't have it. So. Well, there you go. That's oh, that what makes, I did it. That makes know, that's, sense. that's the only reason why I did it. I don't I don't care what anybody thinks. No, I just said that's, that's what I did it for. Heather, yeah. uh, Heather just uh, she, she sent, sent me something about like how it's going to be like required for international travel, travel. Yeah, and that. it's like I went through the process and actually got my passport for the first time in my life. So it's like awesome. it oh, we were talking about that the other day. Yeah, so it's like real talk. It doesn't make sense for me to like finally go through the steps to get a passport right. and then like now that I have it, like not be able to use it. <laughs> yeah. Did you end up getting it through the post office or did you go to do what I said? I did what you said. Okay. Cool, cool. Yeah, I've, 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 I've spread that little that little nugget around. Yeah, it's, it's the best way to do it. Yeah. Go to the tax office. Go to the tax office. Yeah, let them take care of it. Uh, in and, like, I wouldn't say in and out, but like, yo, yeah. like, realistically, like, I was, like, by the time I got mine in the mail, I just got hit up in the post office saying, like, your appointment is sent. Yeah, I see that. Wow. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. So thank you, post office. Yeah, I'm look, I'm looking forward to some more uh, some more live shows. They're, they're starting to roll through. Um, Everybody, there, I mean, there's some that have uh, taken away their their summer tours and kind of reset them back up for this for the fall time. But then there's people out there there's that are that are setting up shows for you know late late summer, uh, July August. That's just nice to see. Uh, I watched the 311 live stream last night of Sound System, and at the end of it, they said they had some special news coming because they have one more live stream for from Chaos from front to back, mm -hmm. and then. But they said that right after they did that, they said that they had some exciting news this, this next time. So it's either going to be them announcing a tour, or it's going to be them announcing like they're going to play more streams, but do them live where people can actually go watch them as well oh, as right, video right. is as, cool. as also That'd be you can watch them from home. So <clears throat> it's happening. It's happening slowly but surely. You gonna go see Badfish? 
Uh, well, yeah, now that I don't know, necessarily have to work that day. Yeah, probably. Yeah, they're playing on the 24th? Yeah, 24th and Roman and Duddy are on the 29th. Two two reggae shows in one week. It's gonna be nice. nice. I can't I can't wait. I'm just happy. It seems like that because I know the independent, independent acts are getting booked a lot. So I think Loyal, Loyal Sally, Sally has. Uh, I think Bubba said we have like five shows on the yeah, books. Yeah, that's nice. That's awesome. um, I I only know of three, so I'm stoked about that. Um, where where are those three? Um, the 22nd, we're playing. Play show in Plano, right? Uh, did I? Are you say are, are you about to? Uh. I think so. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah with, with the, the with the Mason, Mason Adams project. project. That's right. Um, I just don't. I I think, it's, I think that's a May 24th. I want to say. Mm-hmm. Um, that one at uh, six six Springs Tavern. I think I've played something there once. And then uh, the 22nd, we're playing at Three Links. Oh, I, that's the one I'm gonna come see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. with uh, King Clam and Further North. Yeah, yeah, so I'll be yeah. playing a double. Oh, yeah. I'll be playing yeah, a double yeah. header set. Oh yeah. I want, yeah. Is that this that's, that's April twenty second. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so that's two days before. So that's a Thursday. Yeah, I will be thirty four years old by then, as of two days. Old man. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, I know black, black don't crack. Need this round here. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> and then uh, the twenty fourth, we're playing. We're doing like a it's a restaurant thing from like. 12 to 3. I don't know where, but then I have a Mavs game after that, so I haven't put that one in my calendar. Yeah. And then we're playing Troy's uh, at Texas Live. I want to say it's either the 22nd or the uh, 22nd. I'm playing with Further of North. May? Yeah, of May. I've got Further North playing um, the Growl in Arlington on the 15th. And I don't think the FNAs have any. I think we're playing Troy's again in June. I, th- I think I saw Mason Adams Project was also playing at uh, Texas Live coming up soon. They are. They are. They are. Okay. Yeah, I got to make it out there. Like, it's like I don't have an excuse. I'm, so one thing I'm trying to do is like I want to book Arlington. Like I want Arlington to, to work. Because uh, Arlington was notoriously just cover bands right. for forever and a day. You went to Sherlock's. Yeah. And you had um, any number of cover bands there. And then next, next door, door, you had Louis Louis. <laughs> and, like, that's, that's what, what you had, had Lincoln Square, Square, as opposed to, like, mm-hmm. before Texas Live. Because right. Texas Live came in, it just kind of just, like, shut all that down. So, and they started booking all the cover bands. So now, like, they're at a place now where they can book local talent. So Troy specifically is booking local talent, which is dope. Yeah. Um, uh, so hopefully that can kind of trickle out and we can start and building I'll, a music community in Arlington. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the FNAs just played one last week. Yeah, how was that? Uh, that was straight. Um, weather was crazy. Yeah. That was a really good show, though. Really, really good show. It was, uh, the, I think it was like our second or third show, like, as this iteration of the band. Right. So, we were starting to gel and figure things out and figure our flow. Nice. We jam a lot. I saw that. You did, like, a, like a improv uh, yeah. just jam session on stage. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, they made one, the, the first show that we did as this iteration of the FNAs, like, they did one, and it last, like, it was a... It was about my ca- my car alarm was going off because my pants were so damn tight that uh, <laughs> like my guess I was just hitting on, sitting on the alarm button yeah. and the fucking alarm starts going off. Dude walks on stage like, hey, do you have a? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I get up and I go and like check out my car. They make up an entire fucking song about me like leaving the nice. band. <laughs> AC quit. We looking for a new drummer. So and then Robin, I walk up. This is our drummer, AC. I was like, <laughs> I don't realize I had this whole thing recorded, right? <laughs> But no, like they just jam on anything. Joe is uh, a lyrical genius when it comes to that type of stuff. Like he yeah. could write an entire song. Former rapper, ride. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rapper songwriter. Like so, just having somebody with the ability to just like fly off the dome with musicians that just sometimes just want to play. Yeah, it's a good setup, man. It's a great setup, and we're figuring the vibe out. We're figuring who we are. Like this, who, what like I guess what is this iteration of the FNA is going to be about? We're slowly figuring that out. Very cool. So. Yeah, sounds fun. Oh yeah, I can't wait. So, just like you, with all the shows that are coming up, I can't wait. So I'm trying to play out of Texas. Summertime. Yeah, I'm trying. I mean, there's to play places out of you can play out of Texas, man. There's uh, yeah, yeah you. Yeah, Durant, I mean, that was a big, big goal of yours is to start getting out. Durant, Oklahoma. Uh, it's called Bubba's Brew House, and they do all sorts of music. Um, Roman Duddy are actually playing two uh, two shows there. So they're playing two shows here. And they're going to Austin, playing a show, going to Houston, playing a show, and then they're going to o- uh, Durant, Oklahoma, and playing two shows. 
when I was looking up what Bubba's brew house was, because I live in Melissa, right? So Durant, Oklahoma is like 35 minutes away. Yeah. So I was really close. And I was like, well, maybe I'll go up there for, you know, the other two, those other two shows as well. Just go, you know, see four, sh catch four shows. Right. 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 In four days. Um, so I started looking at like who else they have there. And they have like rappers come through there as well. And like um, rock, you know, obviously reggae, country artists. So Bubba's Brew House. You should Bubba's look into Brew House. That. Yeah, Durant, Oklahoma. I mean, it's only right on the other side of the border, so it's but it's in a different state. Yeah, it is a different state. Yeah, so. I'm just, I'm just, I just want to do it, man. Like I'm just, I'm ready. I think at least, actually, all like three, all of the acts really can play out. Like I just have, we haven't done anything with Maita in a minute, so I don't know what the status of those dudes are. I think one of them is about to have a kid. The other one's getting married. So I mean, who knows? Yeah. Life changes when all that stuff happens. Boy, doesn't it? So. We'll see what happens. I'm sure, like it, it, it'll come back to them, like it always does. And they'll have a new vigor to write and experience life in a different way and different yeah. perspectives. So okay, whenever that comes around, I'll be ready. But till then, I think the other three bands are ready to like do some things. At least it's like just get out of here and play and come back. And yeah, I got to play music somewhere else that wasn't yeah. a marching drum. <laughs> right? Hell yeah. So that is a big goal of mine. So hopefully, I, that can happen here pretty soon. What's the record at Mavs? Uh, with us in the building? Yep. I stopped. It's, oh, I st you stopped counting after we got in that losing streak? Yeah, once we, once we broke it, yeah. I kind of like gave up on it. Gotcha, all right. Did you see the, uh, the, I guess not the game last night, but the one before that with the Lucas like, like three point floater? Yeah. Yeah, that's that. crazy. <laughs> last night game was trash, man. That's, huh. Oh. No fucking defense. I was playing in San Antonio, so let's talk, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if you've been following along, uh, we've been doing the Bracketology Beatdown, uh, Battle of the Decades. We Last time we got into God, the semifinals. Like yeah, it's been a minute. Uh, yeah. But we're, now we're well, getting into the finals. Of, that means there's plenty of time for people to vote, though. So that's Absolutely. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I went to Vegas like, in between that time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we took a break. <laughs> yeah. For sure. You, you got, got a job. job. I got a job. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah, had, we got the finals. I had lots of jobs. Yeah, yeah, I've had like, like four jobs since then. Like yeah, the white Jamaican man. Yeah. <laughs> working my ass off. Hardest working bartender in the business. Trying. I'm probably not, but I'm one of them. Hey man. Oh, people say that shit about me. We're, all the, time, we're, we're, I answer it the exact same way. There's 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 a handful of us out there who are all whoring ourselves out to as many bars as we can right now. I mean, we're we're straight up bar whores. <laughs> we're fucking wherever they need help, wherever money can be made, we're all gonna be there. I feel so much better about being called a drum whore now. Like, you just refer oh, yeah. yourself as a bar whore, and it's like, oh, apparently uh, that's no, a we're, casual thing. So that's a casual thing. We're like. bartending whores. I mean, that's what's what we are. <laughs> I mean, my best friend Jerry's working at four places. Uh, we have another friend who works at four or five places. And yeah, there's 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 a lot of us out there right we now. We need. We need. Anyway, yeah. Go where the money's at. Absolutely. That's right, man. I hear well, I'm speaking my language. So. Oh yeah. So right. since since we. So we went through the 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 semifinals. The semifinals, you know, and we had everybody vote. It's the ones the ones that we had people vote on, just to recap real quick, because we couldn't decide. Um, was Lady Gaga versus Beyonce? Somehow I, I can't believe this, but somehow Lady Gaga won over oh, Beyonce. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Legit blasphemy. It's not. It I'm is. sorry. It is. <laughs> I think you picked Beyonce though, didn't you? Yeah, but I was secretly going for Lady Gaga. <laughs> yes, that's your choice. <laughs> uh, the other one was Mumford and Sons versus uh, BTS. Uh, Mumford and Sons won that. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, Zach Brown Band uh, versus DJ Khaled. Uh, Khaled. Another one. Yeah, another yep, one. Another he one won. took it. Leon Bridges versus Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars won. And then the other ones that we were already, were already decided was The Weeknd versus Michael Buble. The Weeknd had won that one. Um, Drake versus Anderson Pack. Anderson Pack won. Ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Ridiculous. Didn't y'all talk? Y'all talked about Drake the other day on the show, didn't y'all? On good, on good vibes. Yeah, a little bit. Why? Just it, it came, came up. up. Anyways. <laughs> uh, and then the other one that was decided by no, us actually, was. I'm sorry. It was just a quote from DMX actually uh, saying how he hates Drake. That's oh, okay. That's <laughs> even better. Like, that's like, great. What was the what, like, what was the like, quote? Because we uh. I have to pull it up, but oh, uh, yeah, wait, yeah, you find that yeah we did a Power of Three, and uh, the Power of Three was was DMX songs uh, because you know we were honoring his passing. Uh, so J Cole, Kendrick Lamar, we already chose J Cole, but uh, we still put that question out there for people to vote on. 
And apparently, uh, everybody else thought K Dot should win. It's kind of crazy, but J Cole is still moving on, even after that. All right. Yeah, I just wanted to know what people thought realistically. Like, I feel like that's just. I, I don't think that's as one-sided as I think. That's probably like the most like the hardest one to pick at that point because you just have two great storytellers, right? Two completely great storytellers, and they just tell you stories in two completely different ways. And some people just like the way that Jake Cole delivers his stories. Some people like the way that K Dot delivers his stories. Yeah, K Dot's run over the last two years has been like just epic. Oh, oh and so is so well, is the Cole's. quote. The quote was, "I don't like anything about Drake." Yeah, that's right. Thanks, Dean. Appreciate it, buddy. Shout out. Um, all right, so I'm not going to change up the brackets again. I'm kind of just leaving it the way it is. It's just like a natural bracket because it kind of all has worked out so far. I'm uh, that, I'm exactly the, the way the it's, it's uh, <laughs> needs to be. So do y'all want to start it off? I mean, y'all can see the, the list. So it's got, the last couple of times, y'all were able to see the matchups. So oh, now yeah. y'all can see the matchups. So we'll just start from the beginning. Lady Gaga versus The Weeknd. It's definitely the weekend, you know. But shout out to Lady Gaga for making it this week. You really think it's you think you think it's hands down the weekend? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, it, man, it, it, I, 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 I mean, it's a little bit tougher for me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the weekend. If it was, if it was Beyonce and weekend, it'd be even more tougher. But I'm just saying, like, it's the weekend. But like, Lady Gaga I, I can't won it for a reason. Yeah, I was gonna say you you just kind of threw out like Gaga like. Like that was just nothing. Yeah, like that was a no-brainer. <laughs> after, 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 after being, like being Beyonce. So, yeah, after I just like, feel like you know, be getting into this to the finals is like is an honor. So that's cool. You don't deserve it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, no, get, I, feel I get you. you. I, I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> I know you're a huge fan. I do understand. So this is like the big eight. This is what we're at right now. Yeah. Elite eight. Elite Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just feel without without question, just the weekend. I don't know, what do you guys think? I, I'm definitely like Team Weekend on that one. I mean, then it doesn't even matter what I think. I mean, I could say Lady Gaga, but y'all yeah, already made the decision, so. Well, no, what, like, I, I mean, I would, choose, I would choose The Weekend. I, I would wouldn't choose Lady Gaga. Gaga. If it was Beyonce, I probably would have picked Beyonce, though. Yeah, I'll, if this be, was I'll a, be honest. If this was a debate show, like, one of us would absolutely have to, and I'd be completely for, like, I, there's. I'm not. I've, but I've told I want to see them both live. I've told y'all yeah. both numerous times. Like I'm not a Lady Gaga fan. Right. If I saw her live, maybe it would change my mind because I know she puts on a show. I Definitely know has range. More, that's more I'm entertainment. See, you know. I want to see that. Like I want. I also want to say, like, based off of what I saw. These are these are probably two people who put on really, really good, good, amazing shows like, live. Imagine yeah. what the weekend did at the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. Like like for his like that's a portion of his set. You know right. what I'm saying? Like that's 15 minutes out of like an hour set that this guy must do. So I'm yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, part of me is like, like I want to see them both live. I mean, I'm st- it's again still the weekend for me because I can listen to the weekend without having that experience to push Gaga up there. Right. But like, I'm sure Gaga has an amazing show. She's uh, yeah, her, her discography is quite larger at this point. But you know, the weekend will get there. You know, I mean, the weekend got work though. He does have work. The like, man's got his catalog's pretty thick too. Like, they, we may not be talking like album to album wise, right? Between, between like mixtapes, yeah. um, and features I mean, or yeah, hidden, stuff he's written. Exactly. I mean, the man had Grammys before he had a fir- his first song out there on a mainstream level. Right. You know. Real so quick. just to just to make sure, just to reiterate. So he's got one, two, three, four, five, 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 six, six seven. seven. Uh, well, six. Those, those those don't really count, right? Because that's the start of a new decade. So he put out five albums in that decade. Two thousands. In the in the two thousand tens. Yeah. One in 2012, yeah, 13, yeah. 15, 16, 18. And then he had one in t- 2020, one in 2021. He's had... Yeah, like, that's just... She put out eight in that time. Okay. She put out eight? Yeah. Damn. Damn. Really? Well, I mean, some of them are, like, are niche, you know, because she did this stuff with Tony Bennett, Cheek to Cheek. Um, but yeah, yeah, eight. The others are legit. Oh, well, some of them are deluxe editions too. Three. So, so Fame, Born This five. Way, Art Pop, Cheek to five. Cheek. Five. Yeah, five. I'm sorry. Five. Okay, so they're right on the same page. Five and five. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I think Weekend. I mean, it's already kind of decided. I I would have gone with Weekend anyways. Just because. God, I didn't win an Oscar though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In this time period too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a like I said. I think I think that was a pretty big song. Yeah. All right. So Mumford and Sons and Pharrell. I'm going. This is easy for me. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, like, that's what's, that's what's weird about the finals. Once we get to the finals, it becomes super easy. It's so strange. 
Pharrell. Yeah. Yeah, Pharrell. It's Pharrell, for sure, Pharrell. But again, kudos to Mumford's for representing uh, rock. Maybe this far, yeah, yep. for sure. You know, it was the only rock band that was in there, and it made it all the way to finals. Don't even think they should have been in there. That's not even the point. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, DJ Khaled, Bruno Mars. I actually feel like for the sake of debate, that's a that's a tougher one. Yeah. Yeah. Because both had tracks. Like, like if you turn the radio on in the past decade. True. The chances of you hearing a DJ Khaled track or a Bruno Mars track on virtually any station. That is so true. Like outside of like your rock stations, like I really believe that you had a toss up as to if you were going to hear a Khaled track or a Bruno Mars track. Um, I'm pretty sure the Grammys speak this, uh, around the same. Yeah. Like for so many songs of the years. Uh, yeah. Hey. That's a tough one. For me, I would have to say it, it's probably Bruno. I, I would go Bruno just because of the stage shows. Like I, I prefer like that's still one of the, one of the best live performances I've ever seen. Yeah. Was a Bruno, was a Bruno Mars set, which that was a hell of a show. See, I, I just, you know, I don't know. I, I get you. I'm saying if the man like if the man can write a hit song, there's a formula, and if you can recreate that formula, you are a success. And everybody's goal is to. Write another one. I get it, but and you put out a you know, if you've already written one hit and you're on that national level, you can throw out you know 15, 20 tracks and at least one of them got a bang. So, any artist at that level has a track that's just gonna hit at the right time. Dude, he annoys me. Which one? Khaled. Khaled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I get it. it. He annoys me. I do. I, I, the whole, the whole, all of it. All yeah, of it. all of it. All of it. <laughs> yeah. I get you. Man, he doesn't have his own album. He doesn't have one album to his name, just a bunch of singles, you know. And the way that people consume music, there's an argument to be made that that makes sense. That's true. I mean, I have no, no doubt that he's making a lot of money. No doubt that he's probably like one of the most sought out producers and, mm -hmm. and songwriters and, and songwriters and beat makers, but. But on the songwriter level, so is Bruno Mars. I mean, Bruno Mars put out three albums in the, in the decade and he's uh, a superstar. But see, that's the crazy thing. And oh, yeah. And, yeah. And also, and most, most importantly, is like the songwriting aspect. Like some, a lot of people don't understand like the amount of like, like writing credits he has like, under his mantle. All right, so, so Bruno, Bruno, Mars. Bruno Mars. Yeah, I think so. Gosh. All right, last one. This one's going to be hard. Anderson Peck and J. Cole. Your my, favorite. My heart is, my heart. <laughs> J. Cole, yeah. Um, I think and this, this was, was this was this one's actually really hard too because if you're looking at the way that both of these guys create and write their and write songs, you have a one of the better producer rappers in the game, which is J. Cole, and then you have a performing musician and right. vocalist, which is Anderson Pack. So it's yeah. like their job titles are relatively the same because they are the front men of their desired acts on music that they do write and create. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but I think J. Cole's star was brighter in this decade. And I think it was I think it'll sustain for a minute. But yeah, was, and, and I think that well, yeah. Pack put out six albums mm -hmm. in this decade. Yeah. And J. Cole put out five, but also produced at least three at least uh, damn. Earth Gang has two albums. JID has two albums. All of those Cole produced. Um, the Dreamville mixtape, yeah. which was all his productions as well. Two Dreamville mixtapes. They're all his. I think one of them was done like after 2020, though. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like J. Cole's been, J. Cole's got work that's just not him. Same way that Anderson Pack has some too. Like he's he did offshoot work. Right. As he is a he's a percussionist, he's a drummer. So he's done work for people as well. Yeah, I was telling you all earlier, he just did a song with uh, Paul McCartney on Paul McCartney's new album. Uh, yeah, J. Which Cole for me. Which you I think, I think, me to listen to. I think Anderson way. Pack, um, I mean, I think we'll be talking talking about him for a long time. Oh, yeah, he's changing the, he's, um, he's changing the game for, for singing, singing drummers. So I can't wait to see, like, where, I can't wait to see where Silk Sonic goes. 
Yeah, he's, he's like, like the Drake, Drake of drummers. Oh, my God. Why? <laughs> Why? Why would you do that? Again, someone, who can, someone who can sing and rap and dance. <laughs> Multi-talented. He can act. He can do it all. I mean... Can we just say? Can, can we say like he's like the childish Gambino? <laughs> yeah, like, I, I like, like that, that better. better. I think a lot of people would like that better. <laughs> yeah, like that's a Donald Glover thing, man. Like the man's a renaissance man. He does stand up. He right. raps. He yeah. He sings. Acts. He acts. Yeah. Magician. Just like Drake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so do we want to, I mean, this is our final four. I mean, we don't have to go any further past this if we don't really want to, but do we want to no, just... No, no, yeah, and then we got to do want, a... Let me get it down to two. Wild card, right? Well, that's, so, that, that is, that is the four. That yeah, yeah, four. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is that four, but do we just want to talk, talk weekend, weekend versus Bruno Mars? We don't have to. Uh, I know we don't have to, but I'm just saying, do we want to right quick? I mean, Who would you choose over that? I think the, or Bruno Mars. I think the, 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 I think the, har the hardest one in the hardest one here would be... Pharrell and J. Cole. Pharrell and J. Cole. Yeah. But I think it does a good job of highlighting the 2010s, you know, and that's the whole point of it, you know, to, to have, once we get to the finals, that group should represent the 20, whatever decade that we're talking about. And I think it's it does a pretty damn good job. Well, so hip hop for size Bruno. And as I was gonna say, at least well, like the, the crazy thing is Bruno brings a live element to it, which is dope. Um, and then you have your electronics. Yeah. And then you have a man who's known for electronics, but actually uses like a lot of live instrumentation. Mm -hmm. Like stuff that he records himself, which is why his. Yeah, I wish so he would do. Some, I wish he'd bring Nerd back. They did. They dropped an album. Uh, this would have been a couple years ago. It's not. It wasn't so far. So far really? gone ago. Yeah. Hmm. It's the one with the Lightning Magic. Um, uh, I want to say it was a baby. Okay. Yeah. You're right. 2017. Yeah. But it wasn't. Oh, damn. Was it that long ago? Yeah. Four that years. Was four ago. years ago now. I remember because I didn't like it at first. Um, because it, it didn't sound it didn't sound live. It sounded way more produced. Mm. Your boy Kendrick's on there a couple times too. And, Ooh, Wale. and those tracks are dope. So that was like the first time like they actually did like, right, like open features to that extent too. Since like Push T on the first that. album. I'm gonna go back and listen to it. It's pretty dope, man. Lemon's a great track. It's the one with Rihanna. All right. Mm, 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 All right, so that's it. The weekend. Pharrell, J. Cole, Bruno Mars. That wraps up 2010s. Yeah, I saw this video this last week uh, where he was talking about he wrote front me for Prince, and Prince didn't want it. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, man. Do you, you imagine, imagine a Prince? Well, I mean, that, that thinking about, about it, it's like, yeah, yeah I, wouldn't those, like, I, I can't see Prince doing it. But could you imagine if he did? <laughs> right, yes. Yeah, the video of, um, of Jay-Z in a studio with Timbaland. And Timbaland's they, he's shopping beats basically. He's like playing beats for for Jay, and they're just going through news. I'm listening to the songs that he's turning down. Like he turned down uh, like a couple Missy Elliott songs that like songs that wanted to be in Missy Elliott songs. One was a uh, Blueberry Yum Yum by uh, Luda, um, and then I think the like the fourth or fifth track he played wound up being the Takeover. And, like he heard the burr, 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 and he just goes, "What? <laughs> I want that." <laughs> Uh, so our brunch playlist at Ebb and Flow is like 90s hip hop mixed, yeah. with, mixed with reggae and it's so great to work that shift because that's like definitely what I want to listen to the whole entire shift. That made me uh, really happy. And Rump Shaker came on. Nice. And like a lot of people were singing it and I was like, fun fact for all y'all people who are listening to this song and singing along with it, this Pharrell made this beat. Yep. They're like, no way. He couldn't have been, he had been a teenager. teenager. I was like, yep. he was. He was. <laughs> He was a teenager. He was in high school still. Yeah, it was a, he won a battle of bands in order to get that opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yep. gnarly. Like Virginia Beach had a, like had a, such a time because you, know, you had him and Timbaland. Him and Timbaland, yep. So I mean, think of it, you had the clips, for like the Neptunes, Timbaland, Timbaland Magoo. Magoo, Missy Elliott, all from like same area. Wow, that's crazy. Like, like so when we think of like Certain areas just kind of like owning their scene musically. Like I, you can think like Houston ran the scene for like the early two thousands, yeah. like for a little bit. Like we were talking like DMX, like in a time when like the hot music was on the like the hot rap was on the West Coast, right. and the East Coast was doing like just shining, yeah. like Hawaiian sh like open Hawaiian shirts, mad mm -hmm. jewelry, khakis, and loud shoes. And then you had cats like DMX. 
<laughs> with tank like tank top blue jeans and Tim's. Yep. Like yeah. like so like he almost like carried like a harder side of like New York hip hop like for a minute. And then you have like the Virginia Beach crew, right. which they made like this super like melodic and percussive like almost like I can I can really sense like the 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 go go sound from like oh, yeah, from yeah. that area yeah. like that influence in their sound, sure. but you, just to have like such a different ideology from Tim and Pharrell is like it's just insane. And, and Atlanta has had a couple of different runs, right? They oh my god, run, yeah. They had the outcast, they had the yeah, outcast, the Dungeon Family Red, and then again here recently, uh, you know, B.O.B. Well, I mean, they had another run with uh, Cash Money. Yeah, mm -hmm. but they also had a run like recently, you know. Uh, the Migos. Yeah, the Migos. The Migos. Twenty One Savage, even though he's from England, but <laughs> <laughs> Fair transported enough. Atlanta. Yep. <laughs> Fair enough. But no, yeah, it's like it's it's just, it's crazy just thinking like all of like how just watching how that all those places happened and yeah. like when they happened. Well, who do you say has control right now, or what? What if you if you you know what I mean? Who who's who's shining the right now? I don't, I'm not it's in the... It's more spread out, right? It's just way more spread out because music's way more accessible now. It's, yeah. you know, we don't have to go and... do it anywhere. Yeah, we don't have to go and buy albums you can listen to. You can do it in Wyoming. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. <Right. laughs> please come back. Right. Come back. Oh, please come back. Like, just give me music. Is he Wyoming? Like I thought it was Montana. Album, right? The divorce album needs to be fucking fire. Oh, dude, I mean, anytime that man goes through something, he delivers. For like, sure. he delivers a... He delivers oh, is they really going through a divorce? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, man, I don't pay attention to that kind of stuff. Oh, I, don't, I, don't, I thought it was all just, like, hearsay. Uh, it's real. No, the only, oh, it's real? Yeah, so the only reason I pay attention is because, like, again, once Kanye hits, like, when he hits a depressive state, yeah. the musical stuff that comes out is, like... It may not hit right now, but it hits later. Like 808 and Heartbreaks, mm -hmm. like still one of my favorite Kanye albums. Yeah. God, that family can't. They, that family cannot do marriage. They should, none of them should get married. No. Just none of them can survive. It never lasts. Oh, Times ten. I wonder why that is. Toxicity. Oh well, yeah. Like there's, there's some like there's some deep rooted like toxicity. Fam family there. toxicity. Just because they're all they're all toxic when they're all toxic together. I mean, what if like marriages don't work? Like, man, like, uh, like, look at J Lo. Yeah. Like, like, apparently she's she's about to go through some shit with A Rod. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's like if that don't work, and I'm like, yo, so you had, like, A Rod apparently stepped out on you, uh, allegedly. You had uh, Diddy allegedly. Right. You had Mark Anthony allegedly. Yeah. You had your dancer allegedly. Like, like, it's like I'm not saying there's something wrong with her. But I'm saying, like, yo, there's a track record. With those celebrities who um, are, like, like think, I mean, how, what I want to know is how does The Rock hold a marriage down, right? Because you talk about, like, a lot of times it's scheduling conflicts. They're never together. Right. They live in different parts of the world, those types of things. The, Ro the Rock is literally going 24-7, never stops. How the hell is he keeping his relationship intact? That's crazy. I, you, you look at the rock man he's so charismatic and yeah. like nice guy and fun loving it's like, it's same, it's like, re like realistically i mean I, I, he's a human so i mean yeah. i'm not like suggesting any i'm not suggesting anything because we all know men don't cheat um <laughs> <laughs> um so i i'm more or less just like thinking like there's got to be something but at the same time when he was wrestling same it can't be it can't be any different, different than when true. he was re he's probably yeah, he's probably with his family more now yeah. than he was as an actual yeah, wrestler that's probably right considering yeah. he was on the road like he never took time off unless, unless he was sick that's true yeah like, he only had two like character makeovers right you had to get, get the light at one time well yeah he did <laughs> <laughs> paid off though hey man rocky <laughs> my came out as the, the rock right. after that <laughs> <laughs> He went under oh, the needle. I didn't, I didn't know that he was two different people. Yeah, man. Yeah, he, he went under the needle. Roman Reigns is going idea. through that transition right now, bro. He came out with the, the pearly whites. Right. Those, man. Yeah. So noticeable. Wow. It, was like, it, was, it was just like his, his time also was for health reasons. Yeah. Like, yeah. like realistically, that was a great character makeover. Yeah. But like, yeah, I don't think The Rock never had that type of time, really, unless he was hurt. Right. Now it's like, yeah, he has time in between like shoots and things like that to actually like make it home for a couple days as yeah. opposed to like. I've got, you know, well, he's got to be here. Boom, boom. He just flies out because, you know, he's loaded. So he has purse, like, jets, whatever, whatever. And he's doing okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's doing fine. <laughs> he's doing just fine. But that's the thing, what I'm saying with those other celebrities, stuff. they have the money too. It's just they don't have, I guess, the, like, the, I, you have to, you have to want to make it work, I guess. You have to have the willpower. You have to have the drive to not only be successful in your career, but also be successful in your, in your, your, your relationships and right. and maybe those people don't have that 
Maybe. I don't know. That's a problem I'd love to have. I'd, I'd love to be successful in one aspect, like uberly successful in one aspect of my life and think that like I could hold that other side of my life like just as like, Im as important. I would like to believe that, but For sure. I also wouldn't mind like having that problem at some point in my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, let me be real successful and think like, oh man, like I'm just a shitty boyfriend or a shitty fiance. Like, like, I don't think that would be an issue for me. I don't think, but I'm also not in those shoes, right. you know. Yeah. It's easy for me to say that from where I am now. So hopefully we'll, we'll get the chance to try this theory out. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're going to take a break here in a minute, but before we take a break, let's just talk about what, what decade we're going to do next. Right oh, quick. yes, yes. So just to re recap, so we've done yeah. 2010. Yeah. Correct. We did the 60s. Yes. Done. We did the 90s. Yes. yes. All right, so we want to do the 70s. Yes. That's what we want to go do. <laughs> Are we going to do the 70s or 2000s? Because we're supposed to like do the 80s for the end, right? Right. Yeah, I like the 70s. 70s? So 1970s. All right. It's time to get well, we'll take funky. A break and then, uh, take a break and then yeah. come back and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah. That's right. And, uh, uh, you, you have to do he's, yeah, yeah, he's, he's stepping now, out. It's been real, guys. I'm, I'm glad we got to the finals. Um, and I'll be back next week. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk, talk about the 70s and you, you start, start working on your 70s knowledge. knowledge. That's right. For yeah. sure. Dang. Oh, what if we just did like a, like a collaborative like playlist? Like let our listeners like create a playlist for us. Oh, yeah. yeah that'd yeah, be fun. I like that. That'd I be fun. Right now, actually. I don't know. I've, I've got, got one. one. playlist? Yeah, yeah, I've got one. If you guys are looking for some weird, cool music, Xennial Surviving the 21st Century. Check it out. It's awesome. I'll share, I'll share it. That's me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Denim with the whites. We'll be back in a couple minutes. Blow the whistle! Blow the whistle! Blow the whistle! We like to party. You're listening to A Good Day for Football with Chris Bustos, Nathan Bedard, David Kroboff, and Troy Warren. Afonso known as a guy who falls in the bathtub and bites into bubbles. Let's go out here! Hi, I'm Andrew Lack. I like both. Let's go out here! Let's go! Oh! Hey! Oh! Dominate! It's compelling! Some bodies. He's a couple girls. Oh! Touchdown! Jackson 5 had... Uh, yeah. It was like, that was just the start of Michael Jackson. It was like 79. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're good, then. Sweet. All right. Are we back, though? Oh, sweet. We are back. Mm. Are we? It goes 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. We're there. Yeah, we're back. Ha-ha! Psych. All right. So, um... You see, we are down one because Bustos got himself a J-O-B. So, we had to let him bounce for a second. And it's just going to be me and TJ wrapping this thing on up. Uh, by wrapping up, we're still going to talk to you, though. So, uh, we were talking uh, 70s before we, uh, before we went off. And now that we're back, we're going to keep talking 70s. Um, so, like, what's, a, what's an act, like, a act that you can just think of from the 70s that you think, not that you would put them on the list, but just, like, I mean, the first one that comes to mind is Jackson 5. Par none. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, that's, that's the first one for me. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I died. Damn, that'd be tough. That'd be, a, that's a, that, yeah, they're going to be on somebody's list. Jackson oh, yeah, 5, for sure. Jackson 5, for sure. Uh, I mean, just, just looking at the Billboard Top 100 from, that, from the 70s, they had three in the top 16. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, they had I'll Be There, mm -hmm. ABC, ABC, and The Love You Save. Yep. So, 
and again to start the again to start like the end the 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 seventies like seventy nine was like the start of Michael yeah so like you know dance machine and all that mm -hmm. like off the the off the wall record um so like everything you had leading up to that was yeah. all Jackson Five and then Jackson Five was they they weren't just kids like. And did it. like they were. They started as kids, and literally a, like a couple years after they stopped, Michael did his solo thing. So it was a like you got to watch those cats grow. Yeah. Um, and that being said, like uh, a lot of that I could attribute to Motown, just as like the hit the hit writing like factory that they were. Um, so I mean, you have any number of Motown acts. Which also would include uh, Stevie Wonder at that time too. Stevie Wonder's on this list. Temptations, mm -hmm. as Mo well. Motown like ran the seventies. Which the Temptations, if I remember right, did not make the sixties, right? They didn't make the sixties. Correct. Those. Yeah. Yeah, because we were gonna we were throwing them into cause this iteration of. Right. 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 Cause, yeah, that's. <laughs> oh man, like, like Steve, like Stevie dropped one of the greatest albums. Oh, you yeah, have Marvin Gaye too. Um, mm -hmm. But Stevie dropped one of the greatest albums of my lifetime, and to to the point where I would say I would leave you all with this scenario. Um, I'll leave it with you also. So I mean, feel free to take a second and think about it. If you were stranded on an island with a boombox, and you had four albums or cassettes, what would those four albums be? Again, take a second to think about it. Are we talking about just in the 70s? No, no, no. I'm talking about just uh, in general. Just in general. Like, if you had to pick four albums to be stranded on an island with a source to play music, that's all you had to listen to, what would your four albums be? Sam Cooke, Greatest Hits. Um, Solid start. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Michael Jackson's Thriller. Okay. Um, hmm. Yep, this is where it gets hard. Uh, I would throw 311's Greatest Hits on there just because. And probably Sublime's self titled. Okay. So, two things I really, I mean, all of them I really love, but kind of different eras, different times. No, that makes way, sense. Sort of, sort of. I would be Random Access Memories by Daft Punk, oh, the, wow. the album that Pharrell uh, produced. Yeah. yeah. Um, it would be Songs in the Key of Life by Stevie Wonder, which is why I brought that like this yeah. question up. Um, After that, it gets uh, to Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar. Okay. And then, whew, probably would be Grassroots by 311. Yeah, good album, for sure. Like, that's, like, when I think of, like, when I think of 311, I instinctively. That's why I, I, couldn't, pick, I, I couldn't pick one 311. That's why I picked great, Greatest Hits. Right. But. Like, I just think, like, th when I think of 311, like, that's the, like, that's the one album that's, like, it just, it was just so raw and pure. Yeah. That's like I, I I felt every bit of that. Like I understood the vibe of this band based off of that entire album. Yeah, because that's they, that's the album that made me fall in love with them. Of course, <laughs> and I found out about them through Blue Album, but then went back and listened to Grassroots and was like, okay. Now you this is this you, is where you told, it's at. You told me to listen to Grassroots. You told me to re-listen to Grassroots. Like when we yeah. met when we were in New Orleans, you told me like all the songs you you're gonna love. Go back and listen to Grassroots. Yeah. And I did, and it was this, it was an album that I just like slept on. I just always went to the Blue Album. Yeah, I went to the Blue Album or the Sound Systems album. Yeah, like instinctively until you told me that, and it was like that changed the way I viewed all of Three Eleven. It was like, yeah, I think yeah. Sound Systems fun though, man. It really is. Oh no, a great album. And it's, that's uh, they were actually talking about that last night on the on the stream system. Is that uh, the sound for it is all is all dubstep. It's a lot of dub, dub a lot of dubstep. And mm -hmm. it's because Nick and S.A. went to Jamaica for like two weeks. <laughs> and they were like ingrained in the culture down there and the music culture down there. And right. that's where like the sound for Sound System came was was from those two going to to Jamaica. 
you know, I, I never really heard it until like they said it and then I go back and listen to it. I'm like, oh yeah, for sure. Like leaving Babylon, yeah. You know, living and rocking, yeah. Yeah. You know, and come original. Right. So you, you hear it and you're just like, wow, this is. That just makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. You know, I would always uh, take that Grassroots was the more reggae album that they'd ever done. And then until you hear sound system, you actually hear what they're talking about. And then like you hear like the different tracks they put into it, the different sounds they put into it, how they mixed it together. And like they went back and like let you listen to the, the old tapes, like actual tapes they recorded on. Mm -hmm. They busted them out and they were going through like each track on certain songs. And you could hear like, you know, there's there's Essay playing uh, a, a record that says uh, like 311, we are the greatest band or something like that. And you don't ever hear it in the song, but it's there. It's like <laughs> subliminal, like... It's there. It's there, because I heard it, and it's on the song, but like you don't ever actually hear it in the song, like when you're listening to the song. So it's kind of like a subliminal message, <laughs> which is, I think is kind of cool. They fed it to uh, us. But yeah. Or spoke it into existence. Yeah. <laughs> I think more or less they spoke it into existence. Um, whispered it at that point. So another band from the 70s that... I, I would have to throw in there is CCR. Mm -hmm. um, yep. The revival. I'm not sure if I've ever heard of this. So this person had two on the top 100. Charles Wright and the Watts, 103rd Street Rhythm Band. Okay. Have you ever heard of them? No. I have to go back and listen to that. But that's what I'm saying. So like, so when I, so a lot of these, like when I when I, when I think of like the '70s, I think of like your trademark acts. Like, yeah. And then they're like, I also think like, as we were talking about uh, how Khaled just drops like singles and singles and singles and singles, I start thinking like, man, there were these quote unquote one hit wonders or bands that would produce like, that put out really good music, but you only heard like us like a track. And being a musician in a couple bands now, I was like, I can understand dudes just getting busy or, you know, musicians, like, writers getting picked up and going to work for other people. But you have, like, songs like uh, uh, Me and Mrs. Jones, written by 360, uh, 360 Degrees of Billy Paul. And I was like, everybody named Mom knows that song. At some point in time, they've heard Me and Mrs. Jones. <laughs> But it's like, I can't tell you another song that I, they did offhand. I didn't even know who sang that song that's, until you just told me. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, I had to look it up, and I was like, damn, that's, that's crazy. Um, uh, and Bill Withers. Bill Withers, yeah. Simon Garfunkel. Simon Garfunkel. Uh, Carpenters. <laughs> were the village people a thing? <laughs> yeah, village people were, I mean, yeah. yeah hey, I you may so. know them for that one thing, but, I mean, that's, that's a thing. Um, war. War. Um, Diana Ross is on here a couple times. So is Aretha. Mm -hmm. um, who else did I see on here? Uh, the Supremes were on here. Uh, Diane Warwick was on here. Ooh. BB King. Wow, I kind of want to look this up. Uh, Ram Jam. Black Betty. Black, yeah, yeah, Ram Jam. Black Betty. Yeah, I, you, know, I, you know the song. Yeah, I just I did. I oh, you didn't know it was Ram Jam. I didn't know. That's that's I one of those that ones today. that like uh, I knew. If you would have asked me who sang it, I would not have been able to tell you. But right. as soon as you said Ram Jam, I'm like oh yeah yeah, it's Ram Jam. Nope. But I, I think it's a one hit wonder too. I don't know if they ever did anything else. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like I I like, I wouldn't have known that until this very minute. Because when I think of Black Betty, that's not who I think of performing oh. it. Who who do you think who do you think played it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, the, it was a skin, not Skinner, was it? Oh, that's because they only put out one album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's a, that's a song that... That's that, the only song that That's the one that made it through. So, I mean, like, when I think of, like... Because Motown used to do this thing, too, where they would write the same song for, mul yeah, for mul multiple artists, yeah. but they would remix it and, like, do something different to right, it. Right, right. But, like, they would, re they would recycle a song if it didn't hit the way that it was supposed to hit with a specific artist. And I think of, like, well, that song just kind of made it. Like, whether you want to say it or not, like, it made it a couple years because now they get to hear somebody else do it. And yeah. then a couple years later, you get to hear somebody else do it, and they're all a little bit different. And so, like, I want to go back and listen to that version of Black Betty because I just don't, I can't imagine any other way. <laughs> Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart. <laughs> Ooh. Chic. La Freak. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Bee Gees? The Bee Gees. Yeah. 
pretty determined to make an album, like uh, make a video, much like Staying Alive. And they had three songs, Staying Alive, Night Fever. Yep. How Deep Is Your Love? Mm. I immediately thought of uh, Drew Hill when he said that. Oh. Like, yeah. I, I heard that and he mean, how deep is your love for me? Yeah. Um, and then I think about the interview where they broke up, that like they got back together to announce a tour and then broke up on the radio. <laughs> Did they really? Yeah, they yeah. I gotta, I, gotta sh I gotta find that video for you. It was, it was crazy. Like, Cisco, like, fucking just got pissed off, like, stormed out. He was ready to fight it. Like, <laughs> I wonder what he's doing these days. I do wonder what Cisco's up to. I, I, I wonder, like, how, like, how burnt is he? Like, cause I'm sure he's like writing for people at some point, or even like still doing some things for somebody. Like, I can't imagine like, that's just a dude who just stops making, who stops singing. Well, it sounds like he stopped singing. I hadn't heard him. <laughs> Eric Clapton. Man. Yeah, this is gonna be a great. Oh, there's the Village People. Yeah, but let's say I know they're there. Leonard Skinner. Leonard Skinner. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Abba. Abba, however you want to say it. Sister Sledge. Sister Sledge, yeah. Billy Joel, back in the back in the talks again. We had him in the '60s, right? We had mm -hmm. him in the '60s for sure. Uh, Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd. Jeez. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Tom Petty and the Damn Heartbreakers. Casey and the Sunshine Band. Casey and the Sunshine Band. Oh my gosh, John Travolta and Olivia, Olivia Newton. <laughs> <laughs> what if John Travolta managed to make? <laughs> Bob Marley back in the talks again too. Ooh, ooh, here's a good one. Hank Williams Jr. Hank Williams Jr. Family Tradition came out in 1979. Wow. And that song is played everywhere to this day. Ooh, Charlie Charlie Daniels Band too. Ever went down to Georgia was also came out in 1979. ACDC. Fleetwood Mac, Don McLean, American Pie. <laughs> Little did he know. Uh, Bob, where I said Bob. Man, Queen. Queen, yeah. Hey, do you think... John Denver. Did you ever watch uh, uh, Bohemian? I have not watched it yet, no. Okay. It took me a long time before I actually sat down and watched yeah, it. Yeah, I haven't watched it yet. Sugar Hill Gang? Sugar Hill Gang. 1979. A hip hop, a hip it, a hip, a hip it to the hip, hip hop, and you don't stop the rocking to the bang, bang, biggest up jumps the boogie to the rhythm to the boogie the beat. Now what you hear is not a test. I'm rapping to a D and me, the crew. Oh, man. Um, Aerosmith. Ooh. Run DMC. Yeah, good one. No, but I, mean, I don't think they would have been in. I was like, just the fact that Aeros like, Aerosmith oh, yeah, immediately what, yeah. made me think of like Walk This Way. Well, Aerosmith was big before that. Oh, oh they are huge before that. <clears throat> huge before that. I just immediately thought like, damn, that just took me to run DMC. Uh, Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> God, we're going to have a fucking blast with this one. Yeah, this one's going to be interesting. This one's definitely. Because this one's got some country. It's got everything in there. R&B, rock, country. I don't know why they consider Four Seasons and Stevie Wonder to be oldies, but uh, let's call them R&B. Yeah, I would call those R&B. I guess you wouldn't. They call Billy Joel ballad, though. So, well, I mean, I guess it, it, ballad rock. I guess wherever they would have, wherever they would have stationed Marvin Gaye. Marvin. Uh, I don't know. Al Green was rock. Okay, see, I don't understand the genres. There. Yeah, I don't understand their genre listing yeah. either. <laughs> to have Stevie Wonder listed as oldies <laughs> and Al Green listed as rock. You you sexy thing. You sexy thing. Hot, hot chocolate. Have you ever heard of hot chocolate? You sexy thing. That song sounds familiar. You sexy thing. Let's see. You sexy thing. Yeah, that's right. Isn't that the? Isn't that how it goes? Yeah. Oh yeah. You sexy thing. I believe okay. in miracles. Yeah, yeah. That's the song. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, this one's going to be interesting. Man, what a commercial life, I, too. I like, wonder, what, what, what do you think Bustos is going to bring into this? I bet you he brings in Eric Clapton. I bet you he would think, he would, he would, I think he would think that you're going to bring in Eric Clapton. Commodores. Brickhouse. 
It's a brick. Man. So we should definitely like set up like a 70s playlist and like like leave a link for like our followers to just like throw 70s tunes on. Like, yeah, I like that idea. I would love to know what cuz I mean, my interpretation of like the 70s was definitely like very 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 funk based. Uh funk and R&B based cuz Motown ran the 70s especially in my household from what like the music that my dad had. So like I mean, disco ran my household for the most part. Yeah, it was funk R&B. Disco was it was it was kind of there, but it was there by way of like funk. Right. Like I knew of the Bee Gees because I could, you know, watch something that, like watch the Bee Gees do something on VH1 and then immediately watch like them do something about Stevie Wonder or watch them immediately do something like surrounding like so disco yeah. was always like engraved with funk. Right. So yeah, but our family was just it was way more R&B, Motown based growing up at least the music that I had access to and then I started to notice the other slave. Yeah, we had a lot of Jackson Slide. 5. Lots of Jackson 5. A lot of Michael Jackson. Man. In the 70s. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of rock. You know, obviously I didn't hear I didn't hear from some of these bands until later on in life. Like Same. Once I heard CCR, I was like, wow, why have I never heard of this? Bob Seger, my mom was a huge Bob Seger fan. It's crazy. Like I never got into like, a, like any type of like a rock genre until uh, new metal. Like Corn was actually like the band that made me like want to listen to more aggressive style of rock. Like just aggressive, aggressive ways to to approach an instrument and use the instruments, especially like the bass sound. It's funny. Like feel these bass sound was so unique and like just the way that like the tones that he would create from the slapping that he did was like. It was really weird, and it kind of just like made me want to listen to other other types of music within this this new metal genre. Which at some point was like, I just don't like being yelled at all the time, so I have to find a way to mellow. Oh, that's like, why you didn't like screamo, right? But there has to be a way for like me to get this type of instrumentation without like somebody just yelling in my ear in every like track. That's funny. Uh, so going back to three eleven and sound system yesterday when they were doing the Q and A after the show, <clears throat> Nick was talking about that album because they made that album in 98 came out in 99 uh but he was talking about like how new metal new metal was starting to become a thing and like they were the first ones to take corn on tour with them uh, mm -hmm. in like 97 or 96 and uh he was just talking about how new new metal was becoming a thing it was getting it was becoming more popular but they were all going very aggressive and they were trying to figure out like how do we still still pay a, stay a part of the rap rock scene mm -hmm. in general, but not do what the you know not do the new metal style, right? right? You know, not go that way, but still be, become, you know stay relevant. And that's when they came out with Sound System. So they, they kept the rap rock going. They that's went cool. a completely different way from what everybody else was going. You know, the Corns, the Limp Biscuits, the when I think of that know. genre, that's literally as about as far as it gets with me. Oh really? Just those two? Like, <laughs> I can't I, think of another one right that's now. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, if I had, if I really had to, I probably could. But like, like when I think of like that, like new that genre of new metal, I immediately think of Corn and Limp Biscuit because between those two, you were able to like completely bridge the rock rap side of things. Because what like because Corn was doing, they, they were fornicating with Ice Cube, yeah, at the time. So like they were like doing like collab tours and like. Like Corn was like a live band for Ice Cube at a couple of these, like a couple of sets that they did, and I was like, "Yo, that's fucking dope." <laughs> Little System of a Down, another one. Oh yeah, yeah. Deftones. And System of the Down, I loved. I love, I love the way that they, like, I guess the way that Serge's voice kind of fit in, like, to the the later stuff. Like, pr basically anything past like Sugar. Rage. Rage, of course. Seven Dust. Oh, seven. Mud Vane, Slipknot, Linkin Park. You know, Seven Dust still pulls crowds, bro. Dude, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. That's they, crazy. They have a, they they have have a very a big following here in mess. Dallas, actually. Actually, uh, uh, Howard. Howard Hancock, mm -hmm. who we've had on the show before. He's actually really good friends with, with, right. with he, uh, Seven he was, Dust. He was at the Bomb Factory show. Mm -hmm. I, I was almost at that Bomb Factory show. Yeah, he's he's a uh, shout out Rosie. Appreciate you. P P O D. P O. Oh yeah. Stained. I don't know if I could see stained in that new metal, but I, mean, I see how they got Johnny there. Johnny Fool, which was a local. I see how group. they got there. That's right. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was other ones. That was definitely a way. But yeah, corn, corn, 
you know, corn and, and Limp Biscuit were the, the two big ones. I mean, I would even consider Rage part of that group. But I definitely would. It, would you really? Uh, to a certain extent, it was. I mean, no, it was. It was just. It was political where Jonathan Davis was emo, to that extent. So, funny story about Rage. So you know that. So you know they canceled the tour this past year, right? Mm -hmm. And they're not doing it this year. So they rescheduled all the shows for next year. And uh, I had tickets to go to. Uh, Las Cruces, no, no, El Paso. And I had tickets for El Paso show, which was like the second show in the tour. And then I had tickets to uh, Boston for Boston Calling. And because Boston Calling was going to be like Foo Fighters headlining one night, Red Hot Chili Peppers headlining one night, and Rage headlining one night, but they were running the jewels was opening, opening up, up for. Them. Yep. So I was like, oh, this is going to be a sick show. So I had, those are the two, two ones I had. So they released the dates, rescheduled dates for this. And then the El Paso show now is on my birthday next year. Huh. On April 2nd. It's my 40th birthday. But I've already started making plans for my 40th birthday. Told all my friends, like, we're going to New Orleans for my 40th birthday. That's what I want to do. Just letting you all know now. That's uh, where, where we're going to be. So I go to... It's too late to change? Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to the show. Because <laughs> I want to be in New Orleans. I understand. That's where I want to be. I understand. Um, I haven't been there in a year and a half. And I'm, you know... I'm, Feening for it. So, anyways, so I'm over at Jerry's house the other night after we get off work, and obviously it's kind of late. And we're sitting there drinking um, and, and smoking, and uh, I start telling about about this situation. And I was like, "Look, there's there's tickets available for the Las Cruces show, which is on March 31st. We have a friend who lives in El Paso, the Las Cruces area, a good friend of ours, mm -hmm. who had tickets for both. And I was like, "Look, we can we can buy tickets." We can fly out to Las Cruces, go to Las Cruces show on the 31st, then the next day on April 1st, fly from you know there to New Orleans and party for the week, right? Or party for a few days or whatever. And so we get on, we get online, we start looking at tickets, and all the tickets are behind the stage now, so they're not good tickets. And <laughs> Jerry, being a, a concert person like me, is like, I'm not buying these tickets. And I was like, man, all right. Well, what else would we do? So we started thinking about, like, I have friends who the, I was going to go see the show in Boston with that live in Boston that all bought tickets. There. So they're headlining Madison Square Garden. The, the last four shows of the tour are all Madison Square Garden. Wow. They play, like, the eighth in Madison Square Garden. They take a day off, and then they play three days in a row in Madison Square Garden. And I was like, I don't know what show tickets they have. I think it's for the last show or, or the second to last show. So we start, go, go, start going looking for tickets to Madison Square Garden. Neither one of us has ever been in New York before. And obviously I've never been to Madison Square Garden. So as we start looking at shows. We end up getting tickets for the 8th in Madison Square Garden in New York. Section 1, row 12, bought f all four tickets. We nice. bought two tickets, then we bought another ticket, and then we bought another ticket. <laughs> and bought all four of these seats right next to each other, but we're literally on the floor right behind the pit, row 12. And I was just like, oh, we, perfect. Couldn't, we couldn't find any better tickets if we wanted to. And for 125 bucks, it was like, yeah, yeah why this not? is a steal. Why not? So yeah, that's where I'm going to be next year, August 20, August 8th. Nice. Yeah, funny nice. thing about Rage. But nice. I'm hopefully going to go to the Kansas City show too. Man, uh, I can't wait to start going to shows. I, I can't wait to be booked so like I have a dilemma. <laughs> like I can't go to the show because I have a show. I think Ubi, U Ubi's still going on this weekend. Yeah. Ubi Doobie in, in Fort Worth. Okay. Which is a big uh, EDM festival. I'm pretty sure right. that, because I, I don't, and Panther Island, Panther Pavilion. Panther Pavilion. Yeah. Damn. Okay. I've heard friends talking about it, uh, talking about how they're still going. And I was like, I like didn't think it was. this? Yeah, I didn't think it was still going on, but I guess it is. So, like, there's a big festival, not a big, big festival, big, but I mean, it's big it's for Dallas. Yeah. But there's a big EDM show festival going on this weekend huh. in, in, in Fort Worth. So like I said, man, it's starting to make a comeback. So, good, I'm fucking ready. <laughs> yeah. I'm so ready. Yeah, me too. I can't wait to hear. You know, uh, somebody just announced a tour um, the other day. There's, there's, there's. Red Rocks is opening back up. People uh, think May 14th. Um, tickets just went on sale for a show on for May 14th at Red Rocks, and it's mm. limited capacity. So I think it went from like 20,000 tickets to 
only selling 3,000 tickets, which I don't know if I'd want to go to Red Rocks with only 3,000 people. No, I feel like that's, like that, that, that's a vibe that like... Yeah, you need everybody yeah. there, right? Yeah. But it sold out in like a couple of minutes. Oh, I bet. Because it's only 3,000 people or whatever, but... So yeah. again, it, man, it's starting. Oh, speaking of concerts, um, we're going to need... I'm going to need your help with something. Yeah, what you got? So I had a friend reach out to me. Her name's... Uh, huh. Her name, her name is now Jennifer Lopez. Um, <laughs> Not to be confused with the earlier J-Lo reference. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she lives in Denver, and she has contacted me to start or help her put together a concert for charity. Okay. Uh, EDM concert, DJ concert. So real cool story. This, this, she had seen this story about this guy who was really messed up on drugs and alcohol and, and was really bad off, you know, an American. Um, he went to, um, I think she said Tanzania. And like, he went to Tanzania for a trip and like, never came home. Like, he, he got sober, uh, built this, built this like school for underprivileged kids there. Wow. It goes like from town to town, like picks up the kids who are in child labor or who are you know, starving or whatnot, and he brings them to this school and he and he feeds them and, and does all these things. And he raises his money from this, this organization called Last Night a DJ Saved My Life. And that's the organization. And it's primarily a bunch of DJs who are based in Europe who put this together. And it's like, they do these, these fundraising events where they put a concert on and the money goes to pretty much to him or they have like a couple more other organizations they work with as well mm -hmm. but it's all based around this or this charity called uh last night a dj saved my life and she had met this guy um whose uh name is his dj's name is nightmare on wax and uh it's a tough name yeah, yeah nightmare on wax yeah i think he's from england and she did like a meet and greet with him and just sat there and talked about this charity the whole entire time and and um, now she stayed in contact with them throughout the years, um, and she's she's asked about like trying to put one of these these shows on here um, in the United States, and it's never been done here before because all these guys live in Ibiza, right? And they do them all over there in Ibiza or in, in England, you know, where the EDM you know culture is you know way more vibrant and whatnot. But mm -hmm. um, she contacted me about it, and we are we have uh, it's going to be a three night event. Um, Badass. Dates not set, but it's going to be sometime around April 18th, or I mean uh, November 18th of this year to November 20th, 21st, something like that. Okay. Um, but yeah, so... Um, that seems really dope. Yeah, I think it'll be a really cool thing. I mean, and we talked to the guy who kind of like runs the, uh, runs the charity, and he's also a DJ who lives in Ibiza, and we she talked to him uh, via Zoom the other day, and... You know, we have to find our own acts. You know, they'll kind of help us, like, get oh, in contact with certain people. But I guess November 20th is, like, <coughs> is a is a charity day in itself. It's uh, Save a Child Day. Mm -hmm. um, or it's, like, National Save a Child Day. Um, and that's what they kind of focus it around. So, like, in Europe, there'll be, like, three or four different concerts going on in different countries all in those, like, three days. Um, all for this charity. And... Uh, we're going to do it here in here in Dallas, uh, that same time period. Um, so we're looking for a venue right now. Uh, okay. Hopefully, Stereo Live will be that venue because obviously they're the mecca of uh, Dallas EDM music. But uh, if not, I'm sh I know we'll be able to find other people through the contacts that we know. And oh, yeah. I don't know anybody at Stereo Live, so that's. That's my my, like my that's, hiccup right now. But I feel like that's something they they would want to be a part of. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, especially being the first time ever being done here, and you know, this is something that we can, you know, again do ne again next year, and you know, do it in a different city next year, or you know, maybe by then we'll have enough clout to where where we can do one here, and she can do one in Denver, and then yeah, and then the next year after that we can move it to three cities, and you know, and just keep on getting bigger and bigger. Uh, that's kind of the hope. Man, I'd be, I would love for like. I'm just I, I'm always trying to look out for for Art Co. and I'm just thinking like they have the patio area outside. Yeah, no, John's definitely John's like definitely in indoors. my yeah. John is definitely in the discussion. Oh Tre man, doing it at trees is also in the discussion. Um, you I, know, it just depends on on the acts really. Like the bigger, the more acts and bigger acts we get, right? The more space we're going to need. So and that's what I was like. Just the, uh, that that would be a hiccup with trees for sure. But that's what I was like, man, that would like. Right. Well, like Arco, you could run two at a time. 
you have one inside and one outside. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it's like the amount of space that they have. And you have people who coming, just coming and going all yeah. day. Like, I think that'd be dope. Uh, they can find like some local food vendors, like set up shop. And they, so they have a bar inside, food out back, something. Yeah. Like that, I think that'd be dope. Great way to spend spend some time in on the charity and listen to some music. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, um, cool to just music. the idea of it was really fascinating. And it's, 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 you know, if you go back and like watch a story of this guy who's in Tanzania, like it's kind of very heartwarming and what he's doing and how he's used, you know, helping children in Tanzania become and become sober and, you know, have a focus, you know, finally find the meaning of his life and what his, you know, what his life meaning was, was, was pretty uh, heart wrenching. So that's pretty um, dope. Where can, uh, where can anybody find that at? Um, I, the, his story is just on YouTube is where I watched it on. Uh, but you can go to a, uh, last night, a, a DJ saved my life. I believe the, I've got, I actually got that saved. Um, so yeah, it's literally a last night, a DJ saved my life dot org. And okay. that's the, that's the, charity that we'll be working with. Yeah, as you've okay. seen, November 20th yeah. is World Children's Day fundraiser. Gotcha. Um, so that's what we'll be doing. Um, and I don't know if his story's on here. I didn't see it. No, that's, that's, actually, that's actually the guy right there. Um, so like I said, they, they work with other, you know, different organizations as well. Right, like right, West right. Bank Street to Street and uh, get equipped. You know, there's other ones they do uh, besides just. That's cool. I got a couple. Um, I got. A, I got. A, I definitely have a DJ who kind of like. I feel like that's right up the alley of stuff that he does. Um, he used to DJ like a lot of Mavs events, but now kind of has his own uh, following. Yeah, which is really really dope. I just, you know, it's definitely something I love to throw his way. So I'm sure he'll at the very least like he loves the, the cause. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be a a really great thing for us, uh, for the city, for the country to help out and help something for a bigger cause. Um, but yeah, so we just kind of started this like a week and a half ago uh, and just started, like I said, we're going to try to find that venue first. And then once we find the venue, then we got to start finding talent finding the talent and you know the more talent we find the more nights we can do the more nights we can do the more money we can raise man so i just wonder if that'd be like a man i'm always just trying to think of like different type of acts too because like i have a like a the dj drummer dj drummer club where i just yeah. set up and play with djs man. um meds has a um the dj and the drummer collective mm-hmm. um the homie Todd Jackson has a DTS. <laughs> Don't take no shit. Oh, is that what it stands for? Yeah, that's funny. So like, I'm always thinking of like ways to like, yeah, and to integrate those type of things for sure. Just because uh, I mean, I, I I know for a fact like, again, I the a, more acts that we can have, the better. The better you know, because I get tired of listening to the, the the same like the same type of music. Yeah, yeah. Like even if I go to like certain festivals, like they, they would have to like I would be the dude who's just roaming because I just don't want to listen to the same thing like set to set to set or the same type of thing um you should go listen to, have you ever listened to grizz yeah oh, okay yeah that motherfucker's badass badass <laughs> he's a great saxophone player and he made saxophone like mixed with edm or mixed with you know electronic music oh yeah that's Anyways. what that's what that's what i loved about big gigantic yeah but it, yeah he does a song with big gigantic too. yeah I mean, that's 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 what i fell in love Getting with big funky gigantic. y'all listen that's amazing and when i saw the way that they did that gig i was like yeah that'd be dope like, I would love to do a gig like that. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah. Um, so, big plans. We'll, we'll talk about this every week. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, please. Just to, like, further updates. And the more we talk about, the more more get out there, too. So, um, we have a very good EDM following here in, in Dallas. I mean, mm-hmm. the, 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 the amount of DJs that we have and the, and the amount of... Of acts that come here and, and this is the EDM fans in general here. Like I, I, yeah. I got a whole crew that does like they do like the holy ship. Yeah, like they go like they go out for like the, the EDM festival. So I know they show they show up and show out here. Yep, yeah. it's, it's it's a family for sure. They all know each other. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. That's cool um, though. That's cool. Anyways, but yeah, 
We got that coming. And I'm with that. We'll talk about that more. So we got the uh, Last Night of DJ Saved My Life. Last Night of DJ, DJ Saved My Life dot org. Dot org. Yeah, you can start looking into it there. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that. I'm gonna send yeah. a, I'm gonna send you a couple of DJs. Yeah, please do. This is like, yes, yeah, so I've worked at a couple. Like, some may not be EDM, but it's like, it is, yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't I mean, it doesn't, like, doesn't have to be. You show up yeah. and act. Like you, you do what you do. Yeah, <laughs> and it'll be great. Like, there's a cat. Um, like, like one of my favorites uh, that I got to work with was a DJ in Denton named Kind Beats. Okay. Um, just because he can, he's a he's a really good flow. So he'll 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 put together he'll put together beats and then he'll hop up and he'll just flow. Oh, nice! And uh, it's like that's that's really cool because a lot of a lot of DJs like they just hype when they get a mic. Right. You know, he actually like he hypes as well as like he actually he'll spit a flow. Nice. So for me as a drummer, Drum like beats. he's al it's always really fun to drum with because his tunes are one fun to drum. It's always fun to have like lyrics going on. So now I have something else that I can play to besides just a track. Right. So like that was always really fun. That would be cool. That would uh, definitely be cool. Then I am unique, uh, DJ unique. Mm -hmm. uh, we do like a like a history of hip hop, where we take we we take a track and then we just tear it all down and like take you to the original sample and then build you to like how it was sampled and how it was used. So we take you on a little bit of a journey through music, which I think is incredible. So like that's you know I think it's fun. Yeah, no, I'm down for all that. Yeah. Again, the more the more the more local acts and the more the more different styles of DJing that we can get out there, the more people are going to show up. And that's the point. Absolutely. You know, it's all for a good cause. So you know, maybe they stay and they find something else that they love, and they like. Oh, I didn't know I liked, you know, dubstep, or I didn't know I liked house, you know, house or whatever the case may be. So. All right, it's going to be a party. Yeah, no, it'll definitely be a party. Like, I'm uh, no matter I'm so where it's at, um, well, somewhere here in Dallas, but yeah, we got some dudes who go who 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 turn up to this. Yeah, like, for sure. Yeah, let's make. Like, let me know what you need from me. So I'd yeah, love to, I'd love to try to help however I can to yeah. make that happen. We'll need we'll need as much help as we possibly can because her and I aren't going to be able. She, I mean, she lives in Denver, so she can't. Right. She can't be here like to on the floor <coughs> to make things happen. Right. So a lot of it's falling on my shoulders right now, as far as like just finding the venue goes. And she knows John. La she knows John Larue somehow, like some way. I don't know how. I mean, but she does. Cool. Um, well, John. She doesn't know him. I don't think as well as as you know you do for sure. Well, it doesn't matter. It's the fact that like that's a you know six degrees of separation, man. Right. Like you book venues. Like I'm sure. You're just, like you have a venue that you're booking. I'm sure your name's going to come across to somebody at some right. point in time. Right. Like just, I. Yeah. I'm. I'm ready for it. That sounds dope. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it should be. So got that for for future. Yeah. Um, so we got that. We got the seventies. You got seventies. Uh, Who do we have next week to talk about seventies with? Uh, MC Robinson. MC Robinson. MC. Yeah, he's a he's a bassist. Um, like actually a bass guitarist, Felix. Um, he's a Dallas based bassist. No, he's a. Solid, solid, solid dude. Like probably one of the most like I wouldn't say like headstrong, but like in a negative conversation. Like like they just have to do things their way. But he's just like just mentally strong and mentally tough. Like just as a human being, and like he's he's one of the most like I, I wouldn't say like eclectic bass guitarists I've ever played with because that's definitely KJ Gray. Um, but he's definitely one of those like I remember my time playing with him because he was just such a unique personality. Um, I know he has a. He's working on a podcast with. Um, okay. With uh, so uh, so sick. Okay. Um, so talking about. Uh, I think it's called Black Thought. Black Thought. All right. So they were talking like like probably like black like black owned things. So like the, I think one of the the first episodes I listened to with both of them was like uh, they were discussing like uh, black owned mov like black owned movies like movies that are written produced all. All black, and I was like, "That was that's neat." Like I did, yeah, yeah. like a lot of the movies that they were listing off, like I had no idea. Like so, it was like it was enlightening. So this dude's very knowledgeable. Um, he actually hit me up about uh, possibly starting up a project. Okay. With he and Stan uh, Stanley, they both are in uh, Cure for Paranoia. Okay. Um, and then uh, with uh, Josh Martin, who's uh, he's done things with Ryman and Steelin, which is a uh, Beastie, Beastie Boys, Boys cover, cover band. band. Yep. 
Uh, but he's talking about trying to do like a like a hip hop tribute band and do like a like a bit of like a jazz like a, a bit more of a jazzy twist to it. So kind of like the way I'm interpreting it, it's kind of like what me and uh, DJ Unique do, where we just build a track. Except mm -hmm. they're just t they they pretty much will take like the original source material and then throw the hip hop on top of the source material. Okay. So like <laughs> I was like, yo, this is gonna be weird and awesome and it's different yeah it sounds very different so when he hit me up about it, i was like that's the type of thing that i would expect mc to hit me up about <laughs> so you're trying to add another band to your already list of bands i would love to <laughs> because if <laughs> because if if, M if mc and stan have the time to do it yeah right. i'm pretty sure i can find the time to do it gotcha yeah yeah because like mc's gigging just like i am and stan does uh the, the collab stuff cure I think he does like his own stuff as well. So like, yeah, if, they, if he has the time, then I, I absolutely, I would love to make the time to make that happen. Gotcha, yeah. yeah. That sounds just, fun though. It just seems like a gig that's right up my alley too. Yeah, I mean, it just sounds fun. That just sounds like a good time. Right. Not that the, the other bands aren't fun, but. No, if there was just, something new and shiny, it's like, yeah. it at least better be fun. Yeah. <laughs> like, that sounds like something that would be fun for like me. Yeah. You know, like that's something I'm looking forward to that. and. Hopefully we can talk about that a bit more, um, but definitely just I, I'm looking forward to learning about like him as an individual because we met through Maita. Okay. He was one of the revolving bassists when Blanco uh, left, to, uh, I guess, to put his energy into starting the FNAs again. So Pom Blanco bailed, and then we got Wade for a show, and then I guess Wade couldn't do an, the next show, and then MC was there, and then KJ stayed. KJ Gray, who I'm still trying to get on. KJ. What's the deal? <laughs> What's the deal? I'm kidding, bro. We're gonna get you on here. You and Nick. <laughs> I'm determined, Mr. Rothhouse. But he actually has a gig in Louisville uh, tonight. He texted me when we were on the break. He's like, dude, I'm so sorry. It's like, dude, it's all good, man. Oh, uh, in, in Louisville? Yeah, he's got a 1.30 sound, like a uh, uh, load in and sound check. I was like, man, it's all good, bro. Like, yeah. Like, he doesn't know, but the past couple of weeks has been like, We've just been figuring it out because this whole podcast started yeah. with us just figuring it out. So yeah. it worked out really well, all things considered. Like, I was never here alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah. I guess at that point, I would just had uh, had the homie concept. Like, yeah. Yo, you're, you're going to be my guest today, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out, concept. Um, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to what we got coming up next. Again, we got the 70s, the 70s bracket. I'm going to go ahead and start a playlist, and I'm going to let – the, the viewers, I'm gonna let y'all, and listeners, I'm gonna let y'all update our playlist. And if y'all can sway our decisions as to who's gonna be on our list, throw those songs on, because I listen. I, I, I listen to a lot of music, and I love me some playlists. So, let's start, let's create the 70s playlist. Let's get the 70s underway next week. We, again, we got MC, uh, MC Robinson Jr., if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, I can't wait. Sweet. I'm looking forward to it. See you guys next Saturday. This is the Hurry Up and Wait podcast. Again, I am your boy AC. This is TJ. TJ, you got anything you want to say to him before we dip? Nope. Good. Go to some shows. Support live music. Support local stages. Help me build Arlington. What's up? Yep. Rest in peace, DMX. See you guys next week. Happy birthday! Happy birthday to this man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, by the, time this cat. by the time this airs on Tuesday, I guess yeah, I, will be be a yeah. I, I will be a third, a brisk. Please, give me any beat to rap on, flow so sick. Sit, Ubu, sit. Good dog.